Guten Tag, mein Fans. Welcome to Asperger's Groove, the YouTube channel. With Sally Thomas Henley giving you another one of his fancy little accents just to start off the video, just to moisten your humorous centers in your brain, the tickly ones. For all you neurotypicals out there, and possibly even autistic people, I see you. Today we're going to be talking about autism, of course, as you do, as it as happens. Today we're going to be talking about how autistic people think you're weird. You weirdos, you neurotypical weirdos, doing your strange behavioural things and talking without your mouth moving, with your voice, not with your voice, with your body language and your gestures, and your facial expressions, and your body posture. It's weird. And today I'm going to be telling you, you neurotypicals, why you're strange. So I think we should start with the typical idea of what an autistic person is, in general. No, not everybody. Autistic people tend to be the strange ones, the eccentric ones, the left out ones, the alienated ones, at school. That's the, the well-known environment for an autistic person because when we get a bit, a bit older, when we sort of learn things, we surround ourselves with people that we know and the people that like us, obviously, that's what everybody does. And autistic people like to gravitate around those who want to understand us and who want to help adjust us into the social environment that they create around them in a circle, in a, in a sphere. Not everybody is that open-minded to just how cool and nice and unique and quirky and intelligent autistic people can be. But maybe something that you didn't know is that just in the same way as this being you, over here. Just in the same way as you looking at an autistic person, speaking to them, interacting with them, you think that they're weird. They don't fit a model, a framework. You can't really put your finger on what they're thinking or feeling. But newsflash, <laughs> this autistic person also thinks you're extremely weird and they don't understand you and they don't understand why you act in a certain way. Switch them around. It's swipped on you. Then the old switcheroo. And that's how a lot of people view neurotypicals. A lot of autistic people. Because we operate on a different wavelength to each other, some people who are neurotypical find autistic people interesting. A lot of people do. But nearly every single autistic person finds neurotypicals interesting. You are very confusing. You do very confusing things. And... We have ways of working, we are perfectly comfortable and feel fine with doing all our weird quirky things and talking in a way that we see fit, that we feel like is the best way of communicating. And you don't do that. And it's very strange for us. You've got a lot of weird things. I'm going on. I know I'm going on. Stop it, Tom. Let's get into some points. Let's get into some points. Number one. Autistic people don't really transcribe to the whole do what feels right, follow your heart. What feels best for you in this situation to do? We like to be logical. We don't like to dance around the bush, beat around the bush, if you, if you were to say it, but we don't like to dance around it. We like to get to the heart of the meaning behind things. We don't want to talk about how we feel about things. We want to talk about how we think about things because that is more interesting to us. We want to know how they think, because that's like our main... That's that, that's what we sort of apply ourselves to. That's what we think we, we are. We are mostly thought. Whereas a neurotypical person will have more of a... I'm the logic in my brain, and I'm also the emotion in my brain. It's just that, you know, these, these levels can differ between people, just in general. But when it comes to autistics... We just think emotions are just sort of kind of a rabid animal that we have to sort of enclose and control and make feel safe. And most of our identity comes from our thoughts and, and not feelings. I was going to say thoughts and feelings. Our thoughts, 
Therefore, it's really strange for us to see neurotypical people completely following their emotions. <laughs> following how they feel about something. If you have any ever said to an autistic person, just do what feels right. You'll probably be met with a lot of questions. <laughs> a lot of questions say, well, I don't know what I feel. Or how do I know that what I feel is going to help? And all of those kind of things play into how we view you as weird. Because you just do stuff based on how you're feeling. And it somehow works. I'm not saying that it doesn't work, but it just doesn't work for us. And it's very strange. You're a very interesting person. Number two. It strikes me that a very common occurrence in the world of the neurotypical, in the brain of the neurotypical, is that you are very impulsive. More impulsive than most autistic people. In general, of course. If you know anything about Asperger's and autism, you may sort of, you know, you may have read about something to do with routine. Autistic people like to know what they're doing because the world is a very uncertain and confusing place and when we don't know what we're doing or we don't know what to expect, we feel stressed a lot. And this is something that, that sort of carries on into different personality traits and it's not something that is completely inherent to autistic people, but I've never met an impulsive autistic person. Maybe one out of the many that I've talked to. Impulsivity for us is very difficult to grasp. We don't find pleasure in doing things that we don't plan to do. It might take us a while to sort of get over the, the initial impulsive action. If someone says, hey, do you want to go for a run? Um, you'll sort of get a bit uncomfortable. And you know, if, you, if, you, if you didn't plan on going for a run and you were planning on going to the gym later, you couldn't go for a run because you needed to go for a gym, for the gym. You needed to follow that. And the fact that you've asked us to go for a run conflicts with that because we need to concretely stay to that routine. It makes us happy. And we don't understand how you can just be happy going out and not knowing what's happening and just going with the flow. Going with the flow. It's been, it's been a bit of a... A common occurrence in these two points. Number three. This is something that occurs, or I've seen, a lot in schools and workplaces. Any place where there is a group of people. People tend to divide themselves, in, themselves into little subgroups of people. And sometimes when you try to enter that little subgroup, people are very resistant to that. No idea why. I do have an idea why because it makes sense. I've read into psychology and I know that, you know, uncertainty and, and people entering your group without your permission or not inviting someone, not inviting them to the group, but they've already come in and started talking to someone is not a great thing for humans in general, neurotypicals in general. But for an autistic person, especially when we're at school and there are these artificially sort of psychological barriers and groups and bubbles around them that somehow you're not allowed to pop. It's very difficult for us. Our brain, the way that the way that we work, usually tends to go towards the side of being independent, of talking to people that you want to talk to, no matter what group they're in. So for often, quite often, you can find that autistic people have a few friends doesn't necessarily have to be in the same group and it usually isn't because we're very picky with them and we want to find people that will be nice to talk to that will understand us that will be nice and if there is someone in the group that we don't like we will not be friends with them even if everybody else is friends with them we just aren't and we find it very difficult to get around the idea of this this social group that you need to sort of prove yourself and make friends with everybody in the social group in order to be accepted because it shatters some delusion of safety. I don't know. Something like that. It's weird. Let those weird autistic kids at school, let them enter your social group and let them talk to whoever they want to talk to without looking weird at them and going, oh, what the hell is he doing? Just walking into a, a, a 
popular group of people without being sufficiently hazed and psychologically damaged beforehand. <laughs> strange. Very strange. Ugh. Why do you do it? I know why you do it. Just kidding. I love you. Next point. Number four. Fashion. Trends. The new thing, the it thing, the fashionable thing, the thing that you should wear. All of these things are to do with social inclusion. When we buy things, when we wear clothes, I'm talking for a neurotypical person, by the way, we want to fit in. We want to look cool. We want to look attractive. We want to wear the it thing. We want to hold the it phone. We want to bathe in the social glory of owning something that's expensive or in limited supply. Now, granted, this is quite a primal thing. All, all humans want to have those things, or to some degree, some obviously some don't. Autistic people do generally tend, at school, not have the most amazing sense of fashion. Maybe they might take some fashionable clothings from around the 1950s if they're interested in that stuff. Doesn't matter. If we like it, we're gonna wear it. And we, do, we don't particularly care for trends or fashions or anything that everybody else is doing. We don't, we, we don't, we don't transcribe to that. Unless we like it. And then we'll do it. But. Number five. Whew. Going on to another one now. It's the last one. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna stop rambling soon. Neurotypical people tend to sort of fit into a certain group and stereotype. For example, if you like going out and you're a girl, you like red wine and you like pretty dresses and you read certain magazines, that's a stereotype. When it comes to an autistic person, we don't really have the same sort of stereotypes. You could say that this is an autistic stereotype, of course, but it's very hard to to really predict what an autistic person likes. Meaning that we have a very eclectic sense of things that we like. The things that we do like and that we gravitate around don't always appear to be linked in any way at all. And often they aren't. Meaning that someone can intensely like watching children's TV shows, but also really like athletics and really like Peruvian coffee beans and love to go to the beach and have long strolls on the beach. Yes, it's a, it's a call back to another video. You got it. Well done. I encourage you to listen to an autistic person, to get to know someone on the autistic spectrum. Talk to them. Talk about their interests. If you ask for maybe one or two interests, I don't know, anything, it could be anything. And then think that you're able to possibly tell what other things they're into. It's probably not going to work. But when it comes to doing the opposite, if you talk to a neurotypical person and they have a certain interest, they tend to all be entangled together and you can kind of see why they like something and like something else because it sort of fits with the things that were created around them. Not, not explaining this very well. It's all linked together. You'll have a better time trying to figure out what a neurotypical likes from one thing that they've told, but it's not gonna work the same way with an autistic person. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list of every single thing that we find weird about you. There's a lot of other things. <laughs> I can tell you if you would drop me a DM, I'll tell you all the things that make you weird to an autistic person. If, if you're into doing that stuff, probably got better things to do, but who am I to judge? We do find you weird, just as you find us weird, and I hope you understand that. And if the world was full, full of autistic people and neurotypicals made one or two percent, you would be the weirdos. You would be the, the ones who are probably bullied more. It sounds like a threat. It's not a threat. <laughs> You'd probably be the ones that'd be isolated more and confused and scared. 
because you're not living in your world anymore. You're living in ours and it's regimented. It's pro- To be honest, it's probably easy for you. So just adopt it. I've got no idea what it, what it would be like. I'm just speculating. But just because you are weird and you are strange, you neurotypicals, does not mean that you are any less. It means that you are different to us and we find you interesting. It's probably a little bit easier to figure out from our side. We have a lot of training on how to interact with you, how to understand you, the things that you do, how to communicate properly with you, just as a general thing, special needs education. So maybe take the time to see it from our side of things for once. Watch this video again if you want to. Think about all the things that I've said. It's not going to apply to you, all of you rather. It's just something that I've seen and it's by no means an attack and it's by no means a assumption and generalization of you. It's just what I've seen in life and what other autistic people have seen in life. I'm glad we have made up and we're going to have a fun time listening to Tom's exit sequence. Kapow! Shazam! If you like the video and you want to show some love, please click the like. It does so much for my videos, it gets them out into the world, it makes them more popular, gets those views, and it draws people in more. So if you can interact with my videos at all, maybe put a comment down below, tell me what you think, tell me the things that I got wrong, tell me the things I got right, Give me your opinion. I want to hear that. Hear it. I'm so happy that you've decided to spend just a little bit of time on my little channel, little corner of the internet, and I hope to see you again. So if you want to see some more videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's up there. It's always up there. And I always do that. Go click, click on that link. And if you want to see some more stuff from me that isn't YouTube related, I've got a podcast that you might want to check out on Spotify called the Forty Orty Podcast. Very apt name, very interesting, very cool, hip, popular. And if you want to see some stuff that I do in my daily life, such as go to media events and things that I do with my family, or you just want to have a little bit more of a personal touch to the Asperger's growth experience, go over onto my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I do live streams at midday UK time. I have a problem. I've got all these strange creatures around me. These strange people that I do not understand. These, they do strange things and they act in strange ways and they band together in groups and do things that I don't understand either. Well, I could conform to this or I could just do something that I like and be around people that I like. And you should too. Keep going with that. See you later, guys. Love you. Hope you're having a good day. Peace, peace.